Hello guys, in this tutorial video we will learn how to define the line element by using wire data and line geometry classes of data. We will start by describing the example 4.1 taken from Kirsten's book, page 92. In this example, we have an overhead three-phase distribution line. Let's label the phases as A, B and C, and the neutral in blue as N. The distance between phases A and B is 2.5 feet and 4.5 feet between B and C. The distance between the neutral and the ground is 25 feet, between the pole and the phase C is 3 feet, and finally, the vertical distance between phase C and the neutral is 4 feet. The phase conductors are defined with a size of 336,400, stranding of 26 over 7, the material is ACSR, and from the book's table in Appendix A, we can get that the AC resistance is equal to 0.306 ohms per mile. The diameter is equal to 0.721 inches, and the geometric mean radius is equal to 0.0244, and the capacity is 530 amps. The neutral conductor is defined with a size of 4 ohm, a stranding of 6 over 1, and the material is ACSR as well. The AC resistance is 0.592 ohms per mile. The diameter is equal to 0.563 inches, and the GMR is equal to 00814 feet, and the capacity is 340 amps. For this example, we will consider an operation frequency of 60 Hz and an earth resistivity of 100 ohms meter. If you go to pages 102 and 3 in OpenDSS manual, you will find that the general series impedance matrix for a line has the following format. Where the ZG term can be broken in RG and XG and they are calculated based on first term of Carson's equations. The reactances of the other elements are calculated based on the geometry configuration of the conductors according to these well-known expressions. Now, we can split this matrix into real and imaginary parts and put them together. By doing so, we end up with a symmetrical resistance matrix and a symmetrical reactance matrix, which can be directly used in OpenGCS to define the line element through the lower triangle, as we did in line elements tutorial video. However, the new feature to be explored here is that OpenSES is able to perform all this calculation for us, including the capacitances, by using the classes wire data and line geometry. Let's go to OpenSES to see how we can use these classes in order to define a line and then check the results. First, let me create a circuit element. I will name it as Thevenin equivalent. Our system is a three phase system, base KV equal to 13.8 and it will be connected to the bus K. Pay attention that, as I didn't mention any impedances, short circuit currents and short circuit powers, it means that the default values will be used. Now, let's define some wire data objects for our phase conductors according to the values taken from the table. As you can see, the name of the parameters are pretty straightforward. You can also define the parameter norm amp which can be used for loading studies and will be better described in the show and export tutorial video. Another important parameters are the units utilized to define the GMR, the diameter and the AC resistance. As you can see, they are defined decoupled from the values. Let's do the same for the neutral conductor. As the name suggests, the wire data class describes the physical information about a cable. However, we still need to describe the geometrical information about a group of conductors, and it's done through the line geometry class. In our example, we have only one geometrical configuration, which includes three phase conductors and one neutral conductor. Let's name our line geometry as pole example. 
it has four conductors, including three phases. This distinction is important, as we will see later when we talk about Crohn reduction. Now, we have to describe each conductor, including its position, according to our reference, and the units used to define the position. Then, according to the pole of the example, and define this point as the reference, if we call the conductor A as 1, we know that it's a phase conductor, and its position is minus 4, with a height of 29, all in feet. We can do the same thing for the other two phase conductors, and for the neutral conductor as well. Finally, let's define a line called line example connected between bus K and L. Pay attention that in bus K, the neutral is grounded, while in bus L, it is not. Now, let's assign the geometry pole example to our line and a length of 1 mile. In order to get the same values from the Kirsten's book, we need to set the Earth model property as Carson. Bear in mind that there are different models to represent the Earth as we can see here in the help menu. Let's type the solve command and also the dump, line example, debug command in order to get all the information about this element and finally run this script. In this text file, we can see the R matrix, X matrix and C matrix calculated by OpenDSS. Now, as a demonstration, Let's calculate two elements of this matrix, ZA plus ZG and ZAB plus ZG, by hand, using the equations that we have shown before and compare with the OpenDSS results. We know that ZAA is equal to the AC resistance plus the XAA reactance. We've got from the table that RAC is equal to 0.306 ohms per mile. However, remember that the expressions that we will use to calculate the reactance are defined for distance units in meters, so we have to convert this resistance from ohms per mile to ohms per meter. Applying the expression for XAA, we get that it is equal to 3.69547 10 power of minus 4 ohms per meter. We know that ZAB is equal to J times XAB. Applying the expression from the manual, again, paying attention to convert the distance units to meters in order to check the results with OpenDSS, we find that XAB is equal to 2.0493 10 to the power of minus 5 ohms per meter. Now, let's calculate RG and XG. Applying the first term of Carson's equations for RG, we find that it is equal to 5.9217 10 to the power of minus 5 ohms per meter. And for xg, that it's equal to 5.08589 10 to the power of minus 4 ohms per meter as well. Adding the results, we can say that ZAA plus ZG is equal to 2.49357 10 to the power of minus 4 plus J 8.78136 10 to the power of minus 4 ohms per meter, and that ZAB plus ZG is equal to 5.9217 10 to the power of minus 5 plus J 5.29082 10 to the power of minus 4 ohms per meter. In OpenDSS, we have set the length of our line to 1 mile. Then, converting from meter to mile, we get that ZAA plus ZG is equal to 0. 4013 plus J 1.4132 ohms and ZAB plus G is equal to 0 0.0953 plus J 0.85157, which are exactly the same values that OpenDSS has calculated, as we can see from the R matrix and X matrix shown in OpenDSS. To calculate the shunt admittances, the method of images is used. Let's represent the Earth in white. In our example, we have three phases and one neutral conductor. Then, we have four images, one for each conductor. The distance between a conductor and an image is labeled as S, and the distance between two conductors is labeled as D. So, for example, the distance between A and A' is SAA, 
the distance between A and B prime is SAB and the distance between B and C is DBC. The self and mutual potential coefficients are calculated according to the following expressions, where RDI is the radius of the conductor I. Notice that the unit is meters per microfarads. As an example, let's calculate the self potential coefficient of phase A, PAA, and the mutual potential coefficient between phases A and B, PAB. Be careful to adjust the distances for the same unit. For PAA, we have that it is equal to 136.086 meters per nanofarads, and PAB is equal to 56.572 meters per nanofarads. If we were to calculate all the self and mutual potential coefficients, we would end up with a 4 by 4 matrix. By inverting this P matrix, we find the capacitances matrix. The relation between the elements of this matrix and the capacitances in the line model is discussed in the tutorial video line. In the same manner we did for the series impedance matrix, you can also check the C matrix in OpenSES by using the damp command. Now, let's assume that the neutral is grounded in both terminals. As we saw, in a three-phase four-wire line, we have a 4x4 four four series impedance matrix, where each element is affected by the Carson's equations represented by Zg. With the neutral grounded in both terminals, we can perform the Crohn reduction, in which the 4x4 four four matrix is reduced to a 3x3 three three matrix. The elements of the reduced matrix are calculated according to the following expression. As an example, let's assume that the neutral in our case is grounded. Then, the new ZAB, ZAB prime, would be the old one minus ZAN times ZNB, which is equal to ZBN, divided by ZNN. Substituting the values, we get that ZAB prime is equal to 0.15594 plus J 0.501675 ohms. If you set open the CS to perform the current reduction, the final series impedance matrix will become a 3x3 three three matrix instead of a 4x4 four four matrix. Then, in our case, let's set the parameter reduce in the line geometry class to yes. Here is the importance of any phases and any cons. Open this yes will reduce all the conductors that are not phase conductors. It considers that the non-phase conductors are the less conductors defined. In our case, there is only one neutral, number S4. Now, only the phases are being considered. Then, we can delete the nodes from the buses 1 and 2, which means that we are considering the default connection that is dot .1, dot .2, dot .3. Running the script, let's check the impedance ZAB prime that we have calculated. RAB prime is exactly the same, and XAB prime is essentially the same. The difference in the last place here is due to the precision considering the calculation. The current reduction can also be performed in the shunt capacitance matrix. However, it has to be done in the potential coefficients matrix before the inversion. The expression is the same. At the end, you will get a 3x3 C' matrix, which can also be checked in OpenDSS.